Why does this sound different from this? Even though I'm playing the same notes. These are different instruments, so have different sounds. The end. Actually, we want some way to explain what's going on mathematically. When I pluck this guitar string, the vibrations of the string reverberates throughout the guitar and vibrates the air. Within our ears, tiny hairs pick up on these vibrations and our brains interpret the vibration as sounds. So in order to understand the physical process of how sounds are made, we need to understand how objects vibrate. From a mathematical perspective, we consider the shape of the guitar string to be given by u of x and t where x is the position along the string and t is the moment of time. A guitar string is tamped down at either end, so for our purposes, the vibrations at the end are essentially zero. We can model the vibration of the string according to the wave equation. Here, k squared is a constant, which depends on the material of the string and how tightly it is wound. For simplicity, I'm going to assume that k squared is equal to 1, which makes the algebra a bit simpler, but doesn't change the story in any essential way. I should emphasize that this is a model, so it won't be a perfect description of how the string moves. However, it is reasonably accurate, at least for short periods of time. The wave equation is one of the most important examples of a partial differential equation, and true to its name, it is used to model wave-like behavior. To give some intuition, the solutions to this equation look like ripples on the surface of water, moving to the left or to the right, passing through each other. It would be possible to spend hours discussing wave equations, but we won't go into the details here. However, the motion of the guitar string looks different from waves in water, so we need to find a systematic way to describe solutions to the wave equation. If you've taken a course on linear algebra, you might be familiar with the idea of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Given a square matrix A, an eigenvector is a vector V which satisfies the equation AV equals lambda V, where lambda is a scalar value known as the eigenvalue. In other words, if we consider A as a linear transformation, the eigenvectors are vectors which get scaled by A without changing their direction. It's a considerable jump in abstraction to consider the operator partial derivative with respect to x squared as a linear transformation, because it doesn't correspond to any matrix. However, it is possible to consider this as a linear transformation of functions, which takes the function to its second derivative. In doing so, the eigenfunctions will be functions which satisfy the equation partial squared u partial x squared is equal to negative lambda u. For reasons that I'm not going to get into here, we put a negative sign on the right-hand side here compared to the usual definition of eigenvalues for a matrix. It's just a convention, so don't let that confuse you. It turns out that given any eigenfunction, we can construct a solution to the wave equation. For those of you who have taken a course in multivariable calculus, it might be a good idea to pause this video and verify that this is actually a solution. And since the wave equation is linear, if we take any linear combinations of these solutions, we get new solutions. In other words, these solutions will vibrate according to their own pattern, regardless of how the string is vibrating otherwise. Furthermore, there's a very deep theorem in harmonic analysis which shows that we can make any solution to the wave equation we want by taking combinations of these special solutions we found. So in fact, it's actually best not to think of the string as vibrating in a single way, but rather that there are many patterns, and that the string vibrates according to some combination of them simultaneously. Furthermore, the frequencies that we are hearing 
are some linear combination of the possible frequencies, which correspond to the square roots of the eigenvalues. When we play a guitar string, the note we are hearing corresponds to the lowest frequency, which is known as the dominant tone. The higher frequencies are known as overtones, and they add color and add texture to the sound. As such, in order to understand the, the sound that a plucked string makes, we really need to find the eigenvalues of the corresponding Laplace operator. For a one-dimensional string, we can solve for the eigenfunctions and eigenvalues explicitly. They're given by trigonometric functions, where L is the length of the string, and N is just a number, one, two, three, and so forth. Since the frequencies we hear are actually the square roots of the eigenvalues, the frequencies we're hearing are pi N over L for N, a positive number. So the dominant tone corresponds to N equals one, and the first overtone vibrates at exactly twice the frequency of the dominant tone, and the second overtone vibrates at three times the frequency of the dominant tone. This phenomena answers our original question of why different instruments have different sounds. When I pluck a string, the body of the guitar acts as an amplifier, and most of the sound actually comes from the air within the guitar. Depending on the shape of the guitar, the wood it's made from, the temperature of the air, etc., different overtones are emphasized or diminished. Also, by playing the string in different ways, I can get a different sound profile to appear, even on the same instrument. And for two different instruments, when I play the same note, even though the lowest frequency is the same, the overtones will generally be quite different, which gives the music a completely different sound. We'll talk more about the vibrations of complicated objects in the next video. But for now, let's focus on one-dimensional strings, which are much easier to understand. You might wonder whether it's possible to hear the overtones directly. With most instruments, this is impossible. But on a guitar, there is a way to do this. To hear only the even overtones, we can put our finger very lightly on the 12th fret, which damps all the frequencies which preserve the center of the string. This allows us to hear the first overtone, as well as the fourth tone, sixth tone, etc. However, the dominant tone and all the odd tones are silenced. This technique is known as playing a harmonic. For the guitarists who are watching, see if you can figure out how to play the second overtone while muting the dominant tone and the first overtone. This idea of understanding the eigenfunctions and eigenvalues of the Laplacian doesn't just show up in acoustics, but plays a central role throughout mathematics and physics. For instance, in quantum mechanics, the eigenfunctions of the Laplacian correspond to the stationary states of a particle, and the eigenvalues correspond to their energies. One particularly interesting demonstration of this fact are lasers. If we were to look inside this three-level laser, we would see a collection of atoms whose electrons are mostly in their lowest energy state, which corresponds to the lowest frequency eigenfunction of the Laplacian. When I turn on this laser, the electric current excites the electrons and pushes them into some combination of higher energy states. But most of these states are very unstable and the electrons quickly drop down to a lower energy. This is the same as what happens with a normal light bulb, and this process releases light, which in a light bulb has many different frequencies and combines in a way which appears nearly white. However, in a three-stage laser, there is a metastable state, whose wave function is essentially an eigenfunction of a particular Laplacian. Electrons remain in the metastable state for an unusually long period of time, somewhere between a microsecond and a millisecond, before dropping back down to the ground state. 
And when they drop from the metastable state to the ground state, a photon is emitted. And the energy of this photon is determined by the difference of the square roots of the eigenvalues. And if you've studied quantum mechanics, you might know that the energy of a photon determines its wavelength, which means that all the photons have the same color. This explains why a laser beam has only one color and stays together for so long without spreading. At this point, this explanation has a bit of a gap. When we turn on the power, the electrons move into the high energy states before dropping to the metastable state. This drop also releases photons, whose energy is not the same as the energy of the laser beam. So why are we only seeing a single beam of light? The reason for this is known as light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Explaining how this works requires a bit more quantum mechanics than I want to get into. And it's a bit tangent to the central point of this video. In short, the photons produced from the metastable state dropping down into the ground state unleash a cascading chain reaction in nearby atoms, which also emit photons of the same frequency. As a loose analogy, you can think of this process as being a bit similar to how the body of a guitar amplifies a particular frequency. And this is why the light emerges as a single beam. For more details, I highly recommend this book by David Griffiths, which is a great introduction to quantum mechanics, which explains the basics of how lasers work as well. These are just two examples of why mathematicians are so interested in the eigenfunctions and eigenvalues of the Laplace operator. In the next video, we'll discuss the differences between eigenvalues and what they mean from a physical perspective.